can hear you, I think. Are you kidding? I can hear you. Get out. <laughs> I am in the 21st century. <laughs> wow, I can't I'm believe so that. I'm so happy. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Excellent. Uh, so I went to settings and I turned the microphone off and then I turned it back on. And then when we can't, so anyway, hello. Perfect. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, I was so relieved. I was like, you got too many fans and they are. <laughs> I know I can read. They're like, please, please. <laughs> I love it. It's perfect. perfect. I love it. Well, first, before we even get started with questions, I just have to say from my, from me personally, um, there hasn't been a time in my life where I haven't seen your face on TV. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love so, it. I just have to thank you. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for uh, inspiring us and especially people that look like us. Um, we're so proud and um, yes, thank you. It's all about giving people their flowers today and I wanna make sure you got your flowers. Well, that means the world to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for the fans out there, I know we would be doing them a disservice. I know we're talking about Chicago Med today, but we would do them a disservice if we didn't mention the iconic a television show, Law and Order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you played Anita Van Buren. Yep. And um, this this show is, it's like um, the blueprint for all crime drama shows. Yeah. Um, also a show that's a rite of passage for so many actors. So, so how does it feel to be a part of such a great legacy and such a long running show on television? You know, first of all, who knew, right? Uh, you take a gig and, you know, you'll run with it as far as it goes. You know, and you never think it's going to last 20 seasons. The show was on for 20 seasons and I did 17 of those. So, you know, I had no clue when I took the job that it would last that long. But, you know, the, the great thing for me is that it allowed me to work at home. It allowed me to work with some extraordinary actors, uh, that whole New York stable of actors. And then it, it allowed me the opportunity to do theater at the same time. So it was it was a win-win situation all, all the way around. And then that character, Anita Van Buren, was really the first female character uh, of that ilk, you know, who was the boss. And it was a black woman. So, you know, that was really uh, a, an extraordinary uh, feat as well uh, to have this character uh, be a, a lieutenant and, and, and a an, uh, precinct that was highly visible. So all of that played into the his history of, of the show. And even to last so long because um, I think I heard somewhere where your agent said, oh, just do this show, you know. Uh, it the might... agent I had. That That's you the... had, <laughs> right. <laughs> They're gone, got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, you know, because I had been doing a lot of shows that toured, and, and he was like, you know, take the show. You'll be in New York. It's going to last, it'll last a year, and then we'll figure out. And, you know. 17 years back, how wrong was he? But he lost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet he's kicking and screaming now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I okay. love it. So let's switch gears a little bit because I know you're, you guys are actually going into your seventh season of Chicago Med. Yeah. Uh, now, for a lot of our guests who haven't seen Chicago Med, can you tell them a little bit? a bit about the show and also your character, um, Sharon Goodwin, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, what she contributes to the series as well. Well, Sharon Goodwin is the administrator. It's a hospital show. It's part of a, of a series of shows here in Chicago that started, I think, 11 years ago now or 10 years ago with Chicago Fire. So there are three shows, Chicago Med, which is the opener, Chicago Fire and then Chicago PD. And so it's about these three groups of people who are the first responders. Um, the shows don't always do 
uh, connecting. We don't always do um, the series. The word won't come to me now. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, they're, they're about these three groups of, of first responders. So everything that you can imagine that happens in, in a hospital is what we talk about, is what we deal with. And my character runs the hospital. So it's imperative of her to make sure that it runs smoothly, that the patients are getting the proper care, that health care is being dealt with on a, a you know A1 basis, that we're dealing with the community at large, all of those things that, you know, as a boss lady, you, mm -hmm. you know, you have to do. And I've made, um, I've actually uh, been watching, binge watching the show on Netflix and Peacock. And I have to say, your character, uh, she doesn't take no mess. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. She doesn't. But, but there's things like you, she really has to uh, decipher the the best option or the best way to go about these things because you're dealing with a lot of people with a lot of money influence and power but she really has to stand her ground but there's also the people who just come into the to the you know emergency room who have no health insurance so how do you deal with that you know, the people that come in with odd uh, ailments. So you have to figure out, the doctors have to figure out what's that about. You know, one of the things that I always appreciate about the Dick Wolf world is that the, the stories are always e e compelling. You sit down to be entertained, but when you get up, you've learned something. And to me, that's the best of television, that you 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 learn when you get up. Because so many of us take our news and the things that we believe, we take that from television. So we have to be very, very careful in storytelling that we're telling the stories accurately. And that's what I love about doing the show. And that's exactly my next question is, you know, it's the show is finding a balance between educating the public and also entertaining right because uh, especially right now with covid and everything we have going on um you answered it basically they are uh educating us as realistic as possible absolutely i mean you have to remember it's television so we're gonna have some space for drama you know who's sleeping with who and all of that <laughs> business but the, but by and large they're dedicated doctors and administrators that work at this hospital and and the goal is whoever walks into the emergency room is dealt with at, as best at, at, with the knowledge that we have to either fix or to, to really want to fix them to make it right to make them healthy again that's the goal um, and you know we have these great characters one character on our show that literally happens in uh, most uh, emergency rooms is that there is a, a, a psychiatrist. And so our Dr. Charles is there because sometimes it might be a mental health issue that's mm -hmm. causing the problems. And so, it, you know, we even use him to help us diagnose patients. So it, I, I really like that we're dealing with um, uh, uh, you know, healthcare in a, in a time where it is most important. Yes, and I was going to ask about uh, during this pandemic, what has helped you stay creative uh, during this era? Because at some point, you guys weren't even shooting. Right, right. Well, the the for me, uh, you know, I'm, I I sew, I quilt, so mm -hmm. I made over like four hundred masks, and that. That really helped me feel Did like I was, them? huh? Sell them? No, no, I didn't sell them. I gave oh. them. I gave them to friends. Oh, you okay. know, I thought friends and family. It was a way for me to participate, and and say because I didn't. I didn't want money from it. You know, I'm cool. I'm good. <laughs> I, I wanted to participate in helping. And, you know, PPE at the height of the pandemic was really important. So I just sent them out to friends and family, you know, all over the country as I made them. And, you know, I, I love to read. So I did that 
And then once we got back into production, I'm over 65, I'm diabetic. My first three episodes were Zoom, uh, which allowed them a time to figure out the protocol. And um, it, it was incredible uh, to be able to participate in a show from my apartment, you know, really odd. And I was gonna ask you about that because you have been such an advocate for type two diabetes. Uh, your character, Sharon Goodwin, in Chicago Med, she deals with diabetes. Was that something that the writers came to you about or is that something you presented? As no, a I said to them, you know, listen, I'm diabetic. Why don't we make her diabetic? Because it would be a great way to, to do public service. Uh, as well, you know, while we're doing the show. And, you know, I've been really vocal about it because in our community, it's something that we haven't really talked about. Listen, there, there, I've lost, uh, my father died from complications of diabetes. My grandmother lost her sight. I had an uncle who had lower uh, extremity uh, uh, amputations. That It's rampant in this country, but specifically in our community, it's really important that we start having this dialogue. So if we allow Sharon Goodwin to have moments where she has to deal with her blood sugar, then it becomes a story that that is that really sits in our community and in our households and even this year i'm introducing the continuous glucose monitor so i'm epatha is wearing it and okay. so goodwin will be wearing the glucose monitor i so, love that yeah I love that. um now let's go back to you as an actress you have so much versatility i mean you have uh, done comedies such as peoples uh, <laughs> Drama films like Black Dick Moan, uh, the TV series of Dick Wolf, that's Chicago PD, that's Fire, that's Med. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you purposely try to find roles that, that challenge you as an actress? You know, I, I don't know if I, 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 you know, it's only been recently that I've been looking. You know, by and large. Work, and, work so much. <laughs> well, well, but. <laughs> You know, I have friends that do it, you know, they, they're they always looking for things uh, to, to do. And, 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 and I, sometimes they just come to me. Like, it's, like I said, recently, it's only been now that I'm thinking I'd like to produce some things and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but, but I've been really lucky in that, uh, you know, the work has come my way. Just, I might have a conversation with the director and what what did that lead to? That led to, uh, you know, doing a play on Broadway, uh, Come Back Little Sheba, just from a conversation sitting with the director. Uh, so it those things can happen like that as well. And a film that is dear to a lot of your fans' hearts is uh, Lackawanna Blues. And yeah. as you can see in the comments, they're already... Uh, <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> so, I mean, with that film, you had so many great actors. Terrence Howard, Hill Harper, Lou, Lou Gossett Jr. Uh, the list goes on, but... Uh, Macy how... Gray, I got to meet Macy Gray. Which Macy is so Gray, cool. <laughs> you know, just so many good people. And um, how, was it, how was it for you uh, working on that film? Well, it was incredible. It, you know, for me, it was the first time I had a lead in a film. And, and you know, just the, I had seen the, the original project that uh, uh, Ruben Santiago Hudson did. He, it, it came from a one-man show that was, um, he sold it to HBO and it was made into this, incredible film and to be able to work with George Wolf. I had never worked with George before. So that was a uh, really great. And then just to be around that group of African American actors, you know, Lou Gossett and, and Hill and, and uh, I, I mean, all these, all these, uh, and, 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 uh, I'm getting old, so my my brain. The, uh, Rosie Perez, and there were just so many people on set. Saul Williams, you know, of course, Terrence. It, it was just 
really an amazing opportunity. Ernie Hudson, I mean, all of these great actors. Yes. It was a, it was an amazing opportunity for me. Uh, an amazing film, and uh, and you were awarded nicely because I still remember uh, the speech. <laughs> <laughs> the speech that got lost somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's because I had never worn a strapless dress before, and I, I, I thought it would stay where it was supposed to stay, <laughs> but it didn't. <laughs> it, that, that definitely backfired. <laughs> well, I know you got to get out of here shortly, but uh, earlier we were talking about giving people their flowers today. Um, is there any soul person right now here on Black Cinema Now Live um, that you would like to give their flowers, just a shout out to. Tell you know, them. I just see right here, my brother and friend, uh, Emilio Sosa has just said hello. I'll give him the flowers. Emilio has dressed me over the years and he has always made me feel comfortable uh, in my own skin and, and he has made me look beautiful. So I, I see him, he's written something on here. So I see uh, uh, Emilio here. So I'm giving Emilio flowers. And you know, one thing that he always did for me, which I, I love him for, is whenever my mother would come to visit, he took her to church and he would come and get her he would take her to church. After church, he would take her for breakfast. And, it, you know, when people do things for your family and they don't have to. Mm -hmm. So I give my flowers to Emilio Sosa. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, and anything to your fans before you get out of here? Listen, I appreciate, I keep seeing these uh, these uh, messages coming up and I just love the fact that people have been following me and they love the work that I do and and the, the responses mean, and they're from all over. All this, over. The responses mean the world to me. So thank you all. I, I love you all because you love me. <laughs> and, um, you know, I will continue to, to do my best for you. And, and please tell them uh, about the premiere of Chicago Med. Oh, yes. Chicago Med premieres on September 22nd. Uh, it, we're the first of the three shows, you know, one night, one family, one Chicago. So we, we come on, uh, we air at 7 Central and 8 Eastern. So please watch. It's going to be a hell of a season. <laughs> and also tell the fans uh, your social media handles, where they can find you. Oh, you can find me on uh, Facebook. and My name, S. Period, Epatha Merkerson. And then, uh, let's see, on Instagram, I think I'm at Merck2577. And Twitter is S underscore Epatha. Excellent. Well, I can't thank you so much uh, for joining us here. Uh, this was a blast. I mean, I'm glad um, everything worked out. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I was scared. I was scared. I know. But thank you so much for asking me to be on. And I'm following you. And I love all the things that you're doing. It's really lovely. Congratulations to you all as well. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And everyone out there, thank you for joining us. And uh, stay tuned. See us again. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. <laughs>